How many hundreds and hundreds of times have we washed our hands over the last couple of months? Hand washing is not just a good health practice, it's become a spiritual practice as we have tried to uh, show our love for one another by doing our part to keeping everybody healthy and, uh, and safe. I'm in the kitchen at East Brentwood Presbyterian Church in Middle Tennessee. Uh, the church has been closed down. The kitchen is here. I'm in it alone, and, uh, well, but the church goes on. And tonight we share with you the Monday Thursday service. Uh, it's an interactive service. Monday is uh, taken uh, from the Latin, and it means commandment. And it has to do with Jesus, his words to his disciples that we love one another. The way he showed that love was that he did the selfless act of washing his disciples' uh, dirty feet. On Monday, Thursday, oftentimes in congregations, there is the practice of foot washing. There's also um, the celebrating of, of communion. Don't worry, uh, we are not going to be asking you at home to wash one another's feet unless the Spirit of God should descend upon you and tell you that you need to do that contrite act towards someone uh, that you love. Um, but we will be celebrating um, communion. And we'll be doing that while we watch this wonderful music dramatization called The Crossroads. And tonight we will listen to Act Three. And during this dramatization, we will encounter the scene where Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples for his last time with them, where he breaks the bread and it becomes what we now know and celebrate as communion. Um, there will be a time then when we will have a chance in our respective homes to have an interactive communion. And so I hope that you will take a moment just to grab some bread, something that we may serve as bread, and have that at your table, whether you're alone or with family, and also something that um, you can take to drink during this part in the dramatization, whether it's water or cranberry or grape juice of some kind, or wine, either with alcohol in it or not alcohol, and that you will have that time when we can celebrate, even though we're distanced from one another, celebrate um, communion together. Um, Christianity is uh, an embodied faith. Long before we gathered in churches to celebrate communion, uh, Christians gathered in people's homes, they gathered, gathered in catacombs, they gathered in prisons, and they gathered around the word and the sacrament, which was the repeating and the celebrating of Jesus's last words to us. And so um, we do that tonight as an embodied people, even though we are separated from one another. Also um, about communion, you know, we know of it as being a gracious act of God by which Jesus Christ offers his life to us in the power of the Spirit. And we in turn, as we partake of this meal wherever two or three are gathered is that we respond in gratitude and then we take our part in serving out a mission in the world. The sacraments are, are just physical signs of this extraordinary love of God. Physical signs, simple elements of water, bread, wine, proclaiming that extraordinary love of God. So I hope that you'll enjoy uh, Act 3 tonight and that it's a very worshipful, worshipful time for you. And may I leave you with a prayer as we begin tonight's Monday, Thursday service. O oh God, your love is embodied in Christ Jesus who washed disciples' feet on the night of his betrayal. Wash us from the stain of sin so that in hours of danger we may not fail, but follow your Son through every trial and praise him always as Lord and Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God bless you. Hi, I'm Liz Beatty, and I'm part of the creative team behind The Crossroads. This Monday, Thursday, we are about halfway through our journey um, that began on March the 29th. The concept for the production of The Crossroads actually began over 20 years ago with our original music production at EBPC called The Call. Um, I had the pleasure of collaborating with our music director, Ray Radcliffe, to bring to life the, the story of Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and the angels. And as soon as I had wrapped, I knew that I wanted to continue the story. 
I wanted to see what happened to Jesus as he grew up and his Mary, his mother, and his followers. Over the years, life led me in a lot of different directions, and I had to put aside my notes and ideas for another day. However, I never gave up on wanting to bring the crossroads to life. As time went on, my own faith journey influenced um, my perceptions of these individuals. Um, in the crossroads, one of the characters that you will see that has a prominent um, appearance is Satan. And I did not imagine Satan as the fiery dragon with the tail and the demon. Instead, I relied on our late son Alex's concept of the addictive voices. Satan acts much like that. He preys on our worst fears, our anger, our doubts, our jealousies, and um, he leads us to doubt ourselves, and he leads us into that dark side. And what I wanted the message of the crossroads to be is that Christ's light and love can overcome any of those forces in our life. Last year, when we, um, we started planning for the sabbatical for John, we came up with the concept of the pilgrimage journey, um, the roads that we see in the Bible. And God placed on my heart the idea that it was now time for the crossroads to, to come to life. And so I went to Nate, and I um, pitched the concept to him, and Nate, who was all on board, and so I wrote for about two months, handed it over to Nate, and with his musical genius, he came up with over a couple dozen songs uh, that became part of the Crossroads, and many of them you've been hearing and will continue to hear through Easter Sunday. I also brought in Brad Brown, who had a wonderful imagination about how to creatively bring the production to a sanctuary and involve the congregation and bring a lot of different um, adults and youth into it. And so by January, we had recorded a number of the songs, we had costumes, we had over three dozen people in the cast and our ensemble groups of the choir and praise band, and we were all set to go. And then a worldwide pandemic broke out. And all of a sudden, much like the disciples in the upper room, we were left with a small group wondering, how would we carry on? And instead of giving up, Brad came up with actually the idea of doing a podcast. So Nate and I went to work, rewrote, reprogrammed um, the, the script, and about nine of us um, sat in the sanctuary over two evenings and recorded it. And then Nate took um, the audio and added the music, added the sound effects, I added some video, and then Paul Ryan put it all together. And that is the journey of the crossroads. Um, I want to thank, on behalf of, of Brad and Nate, all of the um, wonderful people at EDPC that have supported this production. Um, we look forward to hopefully one day being able to bring this to the sanctuary in the, the way it was um, imagined, or perhaps on film. We know, um, and we hope, that it won't be 20 years in the making. Um, in the meantime, I would like to, to leave you with what Christ always seemed to say, and may my peace, peace of Christ be with you during this holy week. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alex Kerbegov, and this is my sister, Dara Kerbegov, and we recently partook in the Crossroads drama. To me, this was a really enlightening experience that really helped me learn about some of the more obscure parts of Jesus' life as God's son and as the person who would eventually save us all as humans. Uh, it also served as a really necessary and welcome distraction from all of the uh, just all the craziness that's happening in the world today. So I really enjoyed my time. To me, this experience was quite enriching. I was able to learn a lot more about the specific details about Jesus's life and the events leading up to his crucifixion and just overall all of the miracles that he performed throughout his lifetime. Um, one thing I didn't know while, that I learned while doing this drama was how big of a role the Pharisees involved in Jesus' crucifixion and all the events leading up to it. I had no idea that they played such a big part in all of that. Um, as a family, we really had a, uh, 
It, it was, as I, as I mentioned before, it was a really welcome and needed distraction just as we're all cooped up in our houses, socially distancing, quarantining, just to try and prevent the spread of this virus. It helped us get out of the house. It really brought us together as one like communal activity, which despite us being all together, we've been in our own separate world. So it's been a really good way to just bring us together. And it's been really, uh, it, it, it's just been very welcome overall. And just also the experience itself, we had a lot of fun recording our lines. We'd never done anything like this before as a family. So uh, it was a fun learning experience and we just really enjoyed everything about it. Definitely. Jesus and his disciples were resting in Bethany. Jesus sent Peter and John to Jerusalem to prepare for the Passover meal. He gave them specific instructions on where to go and what to say to the strangers they would encounter. John and Peter, go to Jerusalem now and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it tonight. Where exactly do you want us to prepare it? After all, Jerusalem is overrun with Passover pilgrims who have, come, who have all come to the city for the traditional meal. I don't know if we'll be able to find an open space at this late hour. Listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make the preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal, the lamb, the bitter herbs, the preserve of fruits, and of course the unleavened bread and the wine.
When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with his closest followers, both male and female, and his mother Mary. Peter, will you please lead the blessing for this meal that we are about to partake? God of the covenant, we come to this table to celebrate the Passover feast. We recognize the many blessings that are spread across this table as signs of your eternal generosity to your people. It is our desire to be in communion with your spirit as we share this meal together. Let us seek to serve and bestow on us the humility to be served as well. May you grant us all the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to do what you have willed be done. Amen. I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Jesus then took a loaf of bread and gave thanks and broke it into pieces. Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks, continued his proclamation. Drink from this cup, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. From now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. His mother Mary, who was looking on, was certainly reminded of the wedding at Cana, where he had turned the water into wine upon her insistence. At that time, he had told her, My hour has not yet come. I invite everyone to share in this meal and ponder the many blessings that the Father has bestowed on us at this time. On his last evening with his closest disciples, Jesus had much on his mind. Truly, I tell you that one of you will betray me. The disciples are noticeably disturbed, and Judas looks especially worried. Surely not I, Lord. Lord, who is it? James and Peter. It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish who will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas Iscariot answered emphatically, Surely not I, Rabbi. You have said so. Jesus handed Judas Iscariot the piece of bread and whispered to Judas Iscariot, do quickly what you are going to do. Judas, looking surprised, immediately left the upper room. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had come in purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. You will all become deserters because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. I want to follow wherever you are going. Where I am going, Peter, you cannot follow me now. But Lord, you will follow afterward. Lord, why can I not follow you now? I am ready to go with you to prison and lay down my life for you. Will you lay down your life for me? 
Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. Peter, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Master, we have a question that we have been pondering. When we get to the table in paradise, which one of us will be considered the greatest? <laughs> the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? It is not the one at the table, but I am among you as one who serves. Jesus got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin. And he began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with that towel. When he came to Peter, he asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. You will never wash my feet. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Well then, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you are clean. Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have example that you also should do as I had done to you, very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Lord, we're all anxious about this future that you talk about. We fear for you. We fear for ourselves. What is to become of us? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you there myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. His disciple Thomas asked, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? I'm sorry, Master, but I'm confused. Of course I know you, but I want to know who is the Father. Judas posed the question, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? If you know me, you will know my Father also. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. We still have so much to learn. You cannot leave us yet. I must be leaving in a little while. However, before I go, I will leave you with a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. No one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friend. I 
the true vine, am appointing all of you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Simon inquired, What do you mean when you say that in a little while we will no longer see you? And Nathanael wanted to know why he said these things. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The time for my departure is drawing near and you will weep and mourn while the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice with a joy that no one can ever take from you. And because I love you, I will not leave you orphaned, but will ask the Father to send another advocate the Holy Spirit, who will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you so that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. And now, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. The hour is late. Let us rise and be on our way. When they had finished the meal and sung the final hymn, Jesus and his disciples went out to the Mount of Olives to a place called Gethsemane. Peter, James, and John, please come with me while I pray. The rest of you, please patiently stay here and stand guard. I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. 
Jesus traveled on a little farther before throwing himself onto the ground. Slowly, he rose to his knees in fervent prayer. In the distance, weaved the shadowy figure of Satan, looming and watching Jesus, crying out to his heavenly Father. On my knees I humbly fall, pay the price for it all, the fall of man and his disgrace. Fall on me in this sacred place I'll be abandoned, be betrayed In my final hour and final day Oh, Father, Father Bless your holy name The hour is at hand when the Son of Man will be betrayed, oh, ah, Abba, Father, bless your holy name. Please take away this cup of sin and shame. This I humbly pray. your holy name the cup that we just passed will surely poison me but if you're willing take it all away but if not my will be done let it unfold your way for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Jesus checked on Peter, James, and John throughout this time, and each time he was disappointed to find them fast asleep. Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was speaking, he was interrupted by a group of soldiers and scribes who had made their way from Jerusalem to arrest him on orders of the Sanhedrin council. Also in the group was Malchus the slave, who served in the temple for the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the disciple Judas Iscariot, who had left the upper room earlier in the evening. Jesus of Nazareth, we're coming for you, searching all Jerusalem for the king of the Jews. The people will betray you, can't hide the son of man. The mob will not protect you, your ending just began. March on, march on, into the night we go. Shine the torches into the dark and shadows. March on, march on, we'll vanquish him tonight. The man we're seeking will soon be in our sight. Your fate was sealed by Judas, the man you called a friend. He sold you out for money, and now your reign will end. Defend yourself tonight, enumerate your reasons. Why we should not punish you for blasphemy and treason. March on, march on, into the night we go. Shine the torches into the dark and shadows. March on. 
March on, we'll vanquish him tonight. The man we're seeking will soon be in our sight. March on, march on, into the night we go. Shine the torches into the darkened shadows. March on, march on, we'll vanquish him tonight. The man we're seeking will soon be in our sight. The soldiers grabbed Peter, James, and John as Jesus comes forward to meet Judas Iscariot. Judas had given them the sign of how he would identify Jesus to the soldiers. Greetings, Rabbi. Judas, it is with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man. Friend, do what you are here to do. Judas kissed him on the cheek as two soldiers stepped forward and attempted to grab Jesus. Jesus put up his hand to stop them, and they momentarily halted their actions. Whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. They stepped back and fell to the ground. I will ask again, whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. Did you not hear him the first time? I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. The soldiers started to tie up Jesus' wrist with a rope, and when Peter grabbed the sword from the guard holding him. Lord, should we strike with the sword? And with one swift blow, he cut off the right ear of Malchus the slave. No more of this. Jesus touched the ear of Malchus and healed it, as everyone looked on in astonishment. Peter, put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 10,000 angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? Am I not to drink the cup that the father has given me? In turning to the group, who had come to arrest him, Jesus said, You, who have come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit, when I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour, and you have the power of darkness. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. As Jesus was led away, he glanced over his shoulder and viewed most of the disciples fleeing. Peter, James, and John stood there, petrified and afraid. Alone and betrayed, abandoned and abused, we cry to you, God. As our Savior stands accused Shall we take up the sword And storm the prison gates Lead a rebellion To change our master's fate In the shadows of the darkest night Isolated from the crowd It's so easy to doubt Everything that you said, everything that you vowed, Satan's words and Satan's ways weigh down our hearts and souls. We cry out to you, oh God, to take back control. Should we go and plead his case to the powers on the throne? Perhaps tonight some mercy would be shown. Do we have the courage of Daniel who fought lions in the den? Or are we cowards who turned on our friend? In the shadows of the darkest night, isolated from the crowd it's so easy to doubt everything that you said everything that you vowed 
Satan's words and Satan's ways Way down our hearts and souls Though we cry out to you, O oh God To take back control We pour out our fears to you and all our misery, how did we end up here, remains a mystery. In this midnight hour, the road is still unclear, the end that Jesus preached is drawing. So an evening that began with the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup ends with the betrayal by Judas Iscariot in the Garden of Gethsemane and the arrest of Jesus of Nazareth. His disciples fled in fear for Jesus, fear for themselves. Would they be next? Meanwhile, in this darkest hour, we turn now to our God to pray just as Jesus did in his time of despair. And in the words that he taught us, his closest circle of friends. Our, Our Father, Father, which art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done in earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our sins, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Tomorrow night, we come face to face with the cross and the fateful last hours of Jesus' life. Please join us on the road to Golgotha that journeys through the trials and tribulations of our Savior. Witness the events through the eyes of his companions of the last three years and feel the pain and sorrow of a mother in anguish as she must endure the agony of her firstborn son's horrific final hours. Traveling through the valley of the shadow of death is necessary to appreciate the powerful light of the resurrection this Easter morning. Join the theme.